gentlemen and students, my pleasure to present to you the Governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Okay, I'm gonna start. I'm not gonna start off and put it all over, but I'm just gonna just tell you this. But first of all, you know we've had a bunch of kids and probably their teachers have never joined us already. I can tell you positively without any question, I love going to the schools because I genuinely love the kids. And the reason I love the kids so much is because I'm still a big kid at heart, but. Way beyond that, I know our obligation to that we have to you, and I know all of the keys to Emerald City that you hold in your hands. You do. You really do. Now, many of you, probably, some of you probably are sitting there thinking, you know, just maybe I really want to leave West Virginia and I want to go somewhere else, and that's great too. And I want to pursue a career, a career in New York City or Hollywood or whatever it may be. And that's great. But I will promise you one thing, and you write this now. At some point in time, you will yearn in your life to come home to West Virginia. And it is our job, our job, to make sure that we have opportunities here that will blow you away. Now, we've done that. 
And it's really cooking right now. And there's so many good things going on right now, it's hard, it's hard to even keep up with it. But this one right here only makes things tons better. I understand you're in a health class. Without any question whatsoever, West Virginia has been ravaged by this drug situation off the chart. And if we don't get you right, we've got a prayer. We've got a chance. No chance whatsoever. I'm telling you, without any question, it touches every last one of us. Joe came to me and said, we want you to be the head coach. I said, well, what in the world are we talking about? Because I've coached lots and lots and lots of stuff. Now, with all of that and everything, I was really honored to say, yep, I'm, I'm in. I'm all in. Because really and truly, all of the pieces of the puzzle are coming together, but one that can cannibalize us. That's this. And you can really, you can think, well, this is just a, maybe a day to get out of class, maybe a day to see baby dog or the governor or whatever, maybe the day to see an honor where a family stepped up and given an incredible donation. Or you can really say, now's my chance to make a difference. Now, I tell you this all the time. Baby Dog and I are on the same dietary program, too. <laughs> Baby Dog loves chicken nuggets. <laughs> but now, just think about this, and I, I'm going to just talk to you just one more second. And I'll be fine. Along the way, this little puppy was given to us two and a half years ago at Christmas, and she grew into this 60 pound brown watermelon. But every time I looked at her through all this COVID junk and all the tough stuff about all that, every time I kept looking at her, she made me smile. Well, I'm gonna tell you, if you look at that face right there and she doesn't make you smile, you have something wrong with you. <laughs> you know, and I can't help you if you look at that face and can't don't smile. And the other thing that is amazing about her, amazing, and she's not trained to do all this, but she loves everybody. It doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Right? The same message. Rich, poor, black, white, Republican, Democrat. It doesn't matter. She loves everybody. Kids, adults. Now, is, is that not the simplest message of all? That what we should do? I mean, I've said to people this a thousand times. I don't like to repeat myself. I don't have a pat speech and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm ever going to write books, the title of the books are going to be The Easy Stuff is Always the Toughest Stuff to Find. Always. Because once you find it, it's easy. And once it's easy, it's right. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you just think about her, she makes people smile, and she loves everybody. It seems pretty easy, doesn't it? But we can't pull it off this day and time in lots of places. And we need to work at that. The reason I've gone on talking to you is, again, I talk, I talk to kids, and I love the kids. And you've got an incredible superintendent, incredible principals, all the people at this school are off the chart. I mean, I'm telling you, you are so blessed you could not even possibly know it. This is the star in the sky. This school is really something, really, really something. So with all of that, it gives me incredible, incredible honor, and I want to make sure I get this exactly right. This family over to my right, and it's Controck, right? <laughs> Rock Garrow is Contagero. Good enough. <laughs> uh, they have stepped up and tried to do something really, really, really special. Bob is the husband, Jody the wife, son Bob Jr., Tommy and Josh. And they have stepped up to do something for this school, this program is off the chart. And it'll change lives. And you know what? I say every single day. What's a life worth? You tell me. 
What's a life worth? You can't tell me that, can you? Because none of us can tell you that. They just are come up with that ex, you know, explanation. Nobody. But with all of that, really and truly, they have decided to do something out of the goodwill of their heart and their dollars to put us on the way on the way at another great school and literally do something that is without doubt going to save lives. I can't thank you enough. I mean that very sincerely. So with all that being said, I, you know, I'm going to quit there and turn it back over, I guess, to Joe and whomever. But, and then when we get done, if you want to come up here and say hi to Baby Dog, I'll stay right here with you. But, uh, but if not, we'll run on down the road. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Brian. Something 
to stay the same. Kids are great. Community is great. For years, as long as I can remember, the Contra Guerra family has supported the community. And again, they stepped up. And I want to publicly thank them to support Ohio County Schools and Wheeling Park. That, I introduced my good friend, your new principal, not your new principal, but your principal, and one of my best hires, or my best hire, in 19, or 2008, I hired her as a social studies teacher and a girls basketball coach. And I followed her career, and she's done a tremendous job, and she's gonna continue to do a tremendous job. So with that, I'd like to introduce Principal Meredith Head. Education and coaching. 
Wheeling Park High School is fortunate to have been chosen as one of the highlight schools. It's our hope this is just the beginning of Ohio County's participation in addressing this dilemma. It is our desire to lead this initiative and help other schools in the state implement Game Changer. Uh, I, like everybody else, uh, thank the Contragera family. At Wheeling Park, the Game Changer Prevention Education Program is made possible in part by the generous donation from the Bob Sr. and the Jody Contragera family on behalf of Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. And, and just an aside, this is part of what this family does for this community. They're incredibly generous, and uh, Ohio County has an incredible history of being uh, very generous to the community, and they follow in that long line. Uh, Governor Justice, Dr. Miller, and Principal Daler, you already said how great they are, but they will effectively, effectively implement game changer here at Wynn Park High School. I've yet to see a challenge they didn't overcome. They are both tenacious in achieving their goals and will work tirelessly to help our kids. We look forward to moving uh, forward with moving with the Game Changer program in conjunction with your office and others in Charleston. And our high, in the high kind of our mottos is together we achieve. Uh, together is not limited to our Ohio County community. We thank Governor Justice for including us in his together so that we can do all that we can collectively to protect and keep our kids healthy. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to one of the folks of the hours, Mr. Contraget. Thank you, Dave. Governor, Ohio County Schools, um, I appreciate the kind words. Uh, we're a 45 year company in Ohio County. We spent a lot of time and energy thinking about the kids in the county, our future. Um, when my sons are all in the company now, now they bring things to the office and they brought this to me and I couldn't think of it better uh, to put our resources behind this game changer. We need to help the kids, we need to get everybody off the drugs. Uh, within this building, we have some of the brightest minds in this school. You guys don't realize how smart you really are. You are our future. You will take the high county, the state of West Virginia, and this country to places we don't even think about going today. But we can't do that if we're on drugs. And we're destroying people's families. We've seen it firsthand. I think everybody in this building has seen somebody that had this fight. So we're just happy to be part of it. Um, Contreras are a county. We work in a lot of different states, but we're a high county driven. And so we wish all the, all the kids a lot of the school systems a lot. Game changer will be a success because everybody that's involved in it want, wants to make it a success. So if that many people want to have success, there's only one thing that can happen, is success. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming out today. Thanks, Bob. Uh, it's my pleasure now to turn it over to uh, United States Attorney for the Northern District who's become a very big supporter of Game Changer, Bill Elmore. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's great to be here. Governor, thank you for being here. Welcome to Wheeling. And thanks for being a leader on this issue. There's no more important person than you to be a leader on this issue in the state. So thanks for being such a strong voice. Uh, and thanks for bringing Baby Dog up here today, too. Appreciate that. Uh, there's a lot of optimism up at this table. Uh, but let me frame the issue and then uh, be a little bit give you the other side of it, then I'll come back with some more optimism, because uh, I, I truly feel that way in the end, but the problem we face is daunting. Uh, I've been dealing with this issue from a prosecutor's perspective for over two decades, and the problem has never been as serious as it is today. Uh, it's never been uh, quite so dangerous. The threat hasn't been uh, so great as it is today. We have synthetic drugs that are being produced in Mexico, and the amounts that can be produced are unlimited. There's no limit to the amount of these synthetic drugs that can be produced. Uh, so even if we seize large quantities as it comes across the southwest border, it'll just make more, which is a, a frightening reality that we're facing in state and federal law enforcement across the country. Heroin will, in all likelihood, go away. And if you would have told me that five years ago, I would have said, well, problem solved. Our greatest threat is gone. Uh, but it's going away because fentanyl has moved in. And fentanyl, in, in 
the market forces are going to force heroin out, and we'll have uh, almost exclusively fentanyl sometime in the not too distant future. Fentanyl is being pressed into pills, pills that purport to be Adderall or Xanax or Percocet. And these pills are being marketed to you all, to young people on Snapchat and Instagram and other social media platforms. They're seeking you out with these pills, making them look to be one thing when in fact they contain oftentimes lethal doses of fentanyl. And so this threat um, is different than what I've seen in the past. And the statistics bear this out. So uh, a study just came out from UCLA that indicates that use among drug use among adolescents over the past 10 or 15 years has basically remained flat. Maybe it's even gone down a little bit. But the number of overdose deaths has doubled. And it's because of these synthetic drugs that are lethal and powerful and being disguised as something else. So what do we do? Uh, what's, what's the solution? And the United States Congress just pushed out a report uh, analyzing the, the fentanyl trafficking threat in America. And some of the suggestions included improved policies and legislation, supply reduction, which law enforcement is working overtime to address, better relations with Mexico, better relations with China. But another key piece to their solution is prevention. And it's my belief that prevention is the greatest weapon that we have. And that's what Game Changers is all about. It's about prevention. It's about preventing young people from using in the first place. And what's different now than it was in the past is that in the past, uh, young people could experiment and get away with it. Young people are going to continue to experiment. That's just how young people are. So we're not going to get rid of experimentation. What's different now is that using it just one time, one of these pills, could be it. So this isn't, uh, I'm not trying to scare anybody straight, this isn't fear mongering, I'm just telling you the reality of it. Uh, one pill really can't kill, and that's what's different today than in the past. We just arrested someone a couple of weeks ago on Wheeling Island who had everything he needed to make fake Xanax pills in his backpack. He had the pill press, he had all the materials, he had the fentanyl, and he was pressing the fentanyl into pills that he was selling uh, as Xanax when they really weren't. So it's right here in Wheeling, it's right here in Ohio County. Uh, the threat's right around us, uh, and, and they're coming to you all on social media. So uh, the great thing about this program, though, and I, I thank Joe Bozick and Larry Cuccio, and Lance Cuccio, for inviting me to be a part of it is, it involves young people, it involves the schools, and it's about prevention. And I couldn't be more excited to be a part of this program because this is where we need to be. This is how we're going to truly push back against the threat that we face. All those other things that I mentioned are important, but if we can encourage better decision making, better analysis, the, the, the risk benefit analysis that you all are going to face if you haven't already, uh, and, and once you leave high school, the threat's going to continue to be there. The more we can engage, the more we can educate, the more we can highlight the fact that how dangerous the threat is, the better off we're going to be, and that's what this program is about. And I'm so excited uh, that Mrs. Daler is getting ready to uh, post that position so that there'll be a, a teacher or, or a coach, a teacher who acts as a coach here at the high school to hammer home this message and to educate everyone here at Willing Park High School. Uh, I've got 32 counties that I have to oversee in my position, but no, no county is more important than this one to me. This is where I was born, where I was raised. This is the high school where I attended and the high school where my children attended. So uh, I want to see this program be a success, and I'm excited to be a part of it and willing to do whatever I can to help. So thank you, Joe, for inviting me to be here. And again, thank you, Governor, for being a leader on this issue. Thank you, Bill. As we get ready to wind it down, as we, everyone had talked, that the biggest component of Game Changers is the prevention education curriculum that was designed by the world-renowned Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation. And with us right now on Zoom is their director of their programming, continuing education, who has designed the Game Changer uh, curriculum uh, from our offices up in Massachusetts. It's Desiree Vasquez for a couple words prior to us adjourning. Hi, everyone. Governor Justice, Game Changer team, educators, families, 
and school board and community members, esteemed students, and so many others. I'm very excited and honored to be here. Prevention is about investing in young people to promote and protect their health and well-being, and it's great to see West Virginia doing just that. All of us at the Hazelton and Betty Ford Foundation are thrilled to be a part of this important effort. Prevention is a key part of our mission to help keep healthy kids healthy and grow them into people who lead healthy and happy lives free from addiction. Addiction continues to be an enduring health concern for West Virginia, and while there are no silver bullets, there are effective solutions. We need to confront this public health concern from every possible angle, including with effective prevention programs that are upstream. Our prevention approach is an empowering one that honors the dignity and respect of young people by partnering with them as they learn the information and skills that they need to make their own healthiest choices about alcohol, opioid, and all other substance use and non-use. At the Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation, we bring a spirit of humility, empathy, grace, and love to the Game Changer program. It's in this spirit that all of the Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation prevention specialists who will be walking alongside Game Changer coaches and students in the state are not only highly trained prevention science professionals, but also people who happen to be in healthy long-term recovery from substance use disorders themselves. We are truly with the people of the state of West Virginia as professionals who have come through addiction and who are committed to prevention from a deep place within our mission. The spirit of humility, empathy, grace, and love that we bring to our prevention work is what you students deserve, but it's also what influences students. Motivated students can in turn motivate their peers toward healthy choices. The prevention work of the Hazelden Betty Ford Foundation is in part so effective for students because it was innovated in conjunction with students like you, who for decades have shared with us their desire to be healthy role models to peers and younger kids. The Game Changer approach to prevention is different from just saying no campaigns and scare tactics because it harnesses real life skills known to be effective at helping children and teens choose not to use substances and to get help early if they need it. These skills are practical, accessible, non-threatening, fun, and with practice easy for students to use for weeks, months, and years after exposure to Game Changer programming. These skills are provided to students by trained prevention professionals, committed school staff, and by peer student leaders who all form a network of ongoing and effective prevention support for youth. For prevention to be effective, it must wed what we know from prevention science with what communities know to be true for themselves. This is why the partnership between West Virginia Game Changer and the Hazelton Bay Ford Foundation has the potential to be incredibly successful and improving the trajectory of kids' health for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you, Desiree, and thank you very much. And again, thank you, Governor Justice, for giving your Monday up to show us your support again. Jeff, thank you. Let me just say this, and 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 this is just how I feel. In my life, you know, I, I you know, you stumble from time to time. You make mistakes, but the Contra Guerra family is that correct? You know, I want to absolutely make sure that I get the right pronunciation. And again, thanks. I mean, really, not only thanks for this, but thanks for the 45 years that you've already spoke up for 40 years and all the great stuff that's been done here. And I want to say one other thing, it's just this. Is if I were to say to you kids, you know, you know, we, we had words said here just a minute ago that I don't want to scare you. Well, I do. I want to scare the living bejeans out of it. Because the wrong move to just look like you're one of the crowd could be a move that could be the last move. Now listen to me, and hear me out on this really clear. I had a root canal one time. And I went in and got the, the, everybody all ready to hit me sign off on all this stuff under the sun. I, I'm sorry, they were doing a tooth extraction of a wisdom tooth. I could have had a root canal, but I was signing off and said, you may end up with permanent numbness of your jaw or this or that and everything else. And here they came. They were ready. They had mask on the whole bit, and they were ready to go. And I said, okay, full stop. I'm leaving. And I had a root canal. I am telling you, with all in me, with all in me, you 
got to be able to stand up. If I handed you a gun and said, just spin it, there's only one bullet in it, put it up to your head and pull the trigger, it's probably not going to kill you, but it really may. You do need to be afraid. You really need to be afraid right now. The last thing I say to you is just one thing. What if I were to say to you, what do you got to do to get better? At anything. What would you say? Say something. Y'all can talk. Practice. Practice? Is that what you said? Okay. That's right. What else? What? He said serious. Is that right? Experience. Well, that's right. Come on now. Think. What do you got to do to get better? I can't hear. Put the effort into it. Okay. And we can go on and on and on. Somebody's going to come up and say, be more focused, be more disciplined, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you, to God above, you better listen. Because this is a white-haired guy that's going to give you real wisdom right now. What you've got to do to get better in life on anything you do is admit you're doing something wrong. And then you're on your way. All the other stuff's important. But if you're not willing to really give in to something and say, I'm screwing up. I'm really screwing up. You're not going to get any better. Now, I love you with all my soul. And you're so precious, it's off the chart. And every time I get in an airplane, I fly, as far as I can see, there's people down there that are depending on me. Well, now, they're depending on you too. So let's make really good decisions. Let's have fun. My God, living nobody growing up had more fun than me on the planet. Nobody had any more fun than me. And I can tell you, to God above, never once did I even try anything, anything related to drugs. Nobody had more fun than me. Now with that, listen to me. Let's be really serious. Let's help save some lives. And all of them, Bernie, I missed you a second ago. A great fan. Everybody here, thank y'all so much for having me. And baby dog too. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Now go do something good. <laughs>